the topic that we would like to talk about today has been selected as the ileal pouch anal anastomosis in the setting of a Crohn's disease. This is a tough and a humbling um, issue that there's no right answer. One, I would like to start, what exactly defines as Crohn's disease? So allow me to categorize it into two. Index versus after the index procedure where the patient is being referred as a Crohn's disease. In the setting of the index, the critical article goes back to many years ago uh, by Genevieve Melton Mew, who's currently at the University of uh, Minnesota, at where we did the study, uh, where I had the privilege of working at the uh, Cleveland Clinic. What we found out there were three categories of patients we included in the study. One, in patients who had a J pouch in the setting of a Crohn's disease, where most of these patients had an initial colectomy confirmed to be Crohn's disease, with minimal perianal disease uh, and non-small bowel disease. The second group is, at that time, we used to do a lot of two-stage J pouch procedures where the pathologist said, you guys did a J pouch, but guess what? Pathologically, it came back as a Crohn's disease. And the third group is where the de novo pouch later on developed to be a Crohn's disease either itself or in the perianal presentations where the pathologically it was not confirmed, but clinically it was diagnosed as a Crohn's disease. So these patients in the first and the second category did great. No difference than the ulcerative colitis. Patients who did not do well were the patients that we cannot do anything in any way, where the disease later on declared itself to be a Crohn's disease. That happens around two to seven percent. So my personal opinion in these settings, if someone on the index pouch, they have minimal to none Crohn's disease or minimal terminal ileum disease, where most of these patients can be classified as a backwash ileitis, which I do not believe the backwash ileitis is equal to Crohn's disease, they can absolutely be offered a J pouch procedure with very good outcome and survival. And especially in the setting of the biologics, that I do believe that we have a much more room to go, but this concept needs to be a patient-driven focus rather than a physician-driven focus. So that's index pouches. So yes, the answer, in the setting of a proven Crohn's disease, either in the colectomy specimen, preoperatively after a subtotal colectomy, or in the setting of a two-stage J-pouch procedure, the patients do well, and in the setting of a very minimal, which means like a one fistula with no multiple fistulization or anything like that, and or in the setting of a limited TI disease, like it's a backwash ileitis, I strongly believe in these settings it's quite all right to do a JPAR procedure. The second concept is the redo, and that is really the big caveat, which is really uh, some of the things that we have a significant room for improvement. Most of the patients that refer to us at the NYU today, they, lay, they were labeled as a Crohn's disease. J pouch went wrong, and patient developed anastomotic leak, they had a fistula, and the surgeon says, guess what, I did everything I could do, everything is healed, I have a Crohn's disease. And these patients, unfortunately, and this is not the gastroenterologist's fault, by the way, this is the surgeon lack of accountability or the system lack of accountability, they got labeled as a Crohn's disease. 80% of the patients that comes to us uh, with a redo pouch are referred in this category, and they have fantastic outcomes. Some of them can be Crohn's disease. So in these settings, what we do when the patients are referred to us with the label of Crohn's disease, we do assess them with preoperative history and physical. The key thing is to ask them when did the symptoms started. If they tell us the symptoms started right after the ileostomy closure, or they had a major septic complication at the time of the original J-pouch procedure, that is a very classical sign this is likely a mechanical septic issue, not a Crohn's disease. However, if somebody did great a year or two after the initial J-pouch and the ileostomy closure, and the symptoms started, that's likely that de novo pouch or a perennial disease becoming a Crohn's disease, that two to seven percent we talked about, those patients do not well. However, sometimes certain patients may have both of them. So in these settings, we assess the patients with a preoperative 
examander in its, excuse me, preoperative MRI of the pelvis, gastrographin enema, uh, selective anal manometry, and then we do a exam under anesthesia flexible pyrotroscopy. In these circumstances, after all these studies complementing each other, if we feel like the likelihood is a mechanical, we are no hesitant giving them a redo J pouch option. If the issues go back to a Crohn's disease, depends on how likely is that is, because some patients may have both. In those settings, what we tell our patients is, let's fix the mechanical problem, let's see what's gonna happen on the Crohn's disease. But the redo pouch in this setting, it's really, once again, needs to be ruled and dictated with the patient. We have a teaching at NYU. Number one rule, if one can live with a permanent ileostomy, try to convince them a redo pouch is a very big disservice. Rule number two, which is a major problem in the United States, which I do also believe in Europe and the rest of the world is, if one cannot live with a permanent ileostomy, try to convince them for a pouch excision or a permanent ileostomy because one does not have the skill set, merit, or the infrastructure to do it as a physician collaborative group. That's also a very disservice to our patients. At the end, I think we need to be open-minded in these settings to serve our patients as long as it's ruled by them, dictated by them. At the end of the day, once again, we're here to serve them. We thank you very much for this opportunity relaying our message at the MIU. Thank you.